All right, so if you paid attention in personal finance class at all, you already know that you want to invest your money in tax advantaged accounts. More simply put, you want to legally pay the least amount of taxes on your investments possible. And as you know, the government actually gives you many ways to do this. The IRA has become one of the most popular retirement investment accounts since it allows you to pay taxes on the money you put in, but then you can watch your money grow. And when you get to retirement age, you can withdraw it completely tax free. And the traditional IRA and 401k offer a similar but also kind of opposite benefit where you actually pay no taxes on the money you put in up front, which gives you a huge tax break on today's income. And this is a huge incentive for people to invest. However, as always, Uncle Sam eventually wants his piece of the pie. And when you withdraw this money in retirement, you will have to pay ordinary income tax on that money. But between the Roth and the traditional, we oftentimes debate which one is better. And there's countless videos out there which share their opinions on which one is best for you and your situation. And that is not the discussion we're gonna be having today. We'll save that for a completely separate video. Because what if I told you that there's actually a secret investment account that gives you the incentive of both? Yep, you heard that right. There's actually an investment account that lets you, number one, contribute money tax-free, meaning you can write off any amount that you put in on your taxes that year. Number two, let your money grow tax-free, and that includes any dividends or other distributions that you get. And number three, allows you to pull your investments out completely tax-free, even on the growth and profit. Yep, that account exists, and it's called the HSA, or Health Savings Account. And there's a few super important rules and restrictions on the HSA, so let's dive in. But first, let me add the disclaimer that this is not specific investment advice. This is just me sharing my thoughts and opinions on a particular account. But make sure you research any investments you make on your own. And if needed, make sure you also consult your investment and tax professionals. And of course, make sure you hit that like button. And if you want more videos just like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, HSAs are unique in that they allow you to contribute pre-tax money to the account. They allow your investments within the account to grow tax-free and you can withdraw those funds completely tax-free with one caveat. Those funds need to cover eligible medical expenses. But before you click off the video, there's actually ways you can use this to dramatically alter your finances for the better. So just to describe the HSA, let's say you have a medical expense come up for $10,000. Well, right there, right then, you do have the option to dip into your HSA to pay for that medical expense, and you will not pay any taxes on that withdrawal. But if you invest that wisely, you can build up that HSA balance over time and create quite a substantial fund for any medical expenses. And that allows you to cover yourself in the future in case any big medical expenses pop up. And if you do have medical expenses pop up, I actually recommend not using your HSA while you're growing and building that fund. And here's why. There's no time limit on how far back you can go to use a medical expense for a tax-free withdrawal. The only rule is that that medical expense must have taken place after you actually opened your HSA. So what do I mean by that? So for example, let's say you open an HSA in the year 2023, and let's say you invest $500 a month in that account with an average annual return of 8%, and you do this for 20 years. After 20 years, assuming you didn't touch this money in the HSA and you just let it build and grow, you would have $280,000. Now let's say that over those 20 years that you were investing in your HSA, you incurred $50,000 worth of medical expenses over time and you saved your receipts, you can use those historic medical expenses to withdraw that $50,000 completely tax-free out of your HSA. And you can leave in that remaining balance to keep growing to cover any medical expenses in the future. So instead of regularly paying for medical expenses using your HSA every day, you can instead save those receipts, pay for those medical expenses out of pocket with your own income, allow your HSA investments to keep growing, and then at a later date when you've let those HSA investments grow, you can go back and use those previous medical expenses to withdraw some of that money completely tax-free. And this just gives you another investment account that's tax advantage that's gonna save you money and this is one of my favorite accounts to use personally. But there's a really important part of that I don't want you to miss. Make sure you save those receipts if you're gonna go back and use a historic medical expense to make a tax-free withdrawal. And that's because if you ever get audited by the IRS and they find these tax-free withdrawals, then you're gonna have to prove that you actually have an eligible medical expense that allows you to take that tax-free withdrawal. 
So make sure you have those receipts stored and on hand in case that time comes. But moving on from that, let's get to the next question you probably have. Can you put too much money in your HSA? For example, what if I have way more in my HSA than I need to actually cover my medical expenses? Is that money stuck in there if I don't have enough expenses to qualify to withdraw it? And the good news is no, you cannot put too much money in and here's why. When you turn 65, the HSA pretty much turns into a traditional IRA. Even after 65, you can still withdraw money tax-free for medical expenses, but you can also withdraw money for any reason and pay ordinary income tax on it with no penalty, which is how a traditional IRA works. So you always have the benefit of having a tax-free withdrawal for medical reasons, but let's say you get to age 65 and you have like a million bucks in your HSA and you know, I'm never going to use all of this for medical expenses. Well, you can pull some of it out, you'll pay ordinary income tax on it, but you'll still come out better ahead with that tax advantage. But the short answer is no, even if you have too much in your account to cover medical expenses, you do have a really great tax advantage way to get that money out later. So in my opinion, there's really no downside to investing in an HSA. Either it'll be just enough to cover all of your medical expenses through life and give you a great tax benefit, or it'll also become a retirement account that you can use at age 65. But now that we've talked about the good things about an HSA, and before you start looking into one and opening one, let's talk about a few important details and rules and restrictions that go with the HSA. Number one, to be eligible for an HSA, you must be covered by what is considered a high deductible insurance plan. And it's really confusing and there's a lot of factors that determine which plans actually qualify for this. For example, I've seen that the deductible requirements are different if you purchase your own health insurance or if you have health insurance that's provided by an employer. So make sure you consult with your insurance company, with your HR department, and even possibly with a tax professional to make sure that you even qualify for one of these accounts. And the next point is that the government recognizes that these accounts are extremely powerful investing tools and they do have contribution limits to them. In 2023, the individual HSA contribution limit was $3,850, and for families, it was $7,550. In 2024, that's gonna jump to $4,150 and $8,300 respectively. And this actually includes any employer contributions that you get, which is different from how our 401k works. So make sure you're also including any money your employer gives you when you're considering those limits. And also these guidelines and rules change on a very frequent basis. So make sure you're staying up to date on what the actual limitations are with your HSA. And as always, there may be other requirements that go into using an HSA. So before you start doing this on your own, make sure you also do your own research. But if you're eligible, these are great investment accounts. I cannot recommend them more. I love investing in an HSA. And I love the tax incentive that that's gonna provide me later in life when I have a whole stack of medical bills piled up and I can pull out a huge lump sum tax-free from that account. So what do you think about this? Do you like the HSA investing method? Do you disagree with me? Well, I wanna hear about it. So make sure you let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.